Member for Solomon. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and um, just in case the uh, uh, previous speaker is leaving the chamber, no, he's, he's staying. Um, you can be assured that we are very proud uh, of what we're doing with a minimum wage in that increase. Uh, very proud indeed. And I want to acknowledge also uh, the previous speaker's acknowledgement of the massive debt that was racked up uh, by those opposite in former governments before COVID. Before no one ever knew what COVID was. There was a massive debt racked up. So it's a bit rich, I've got to say, Deputy Speaker, for those opposite to talk about broken promises. Uh, very rich. I mean, they were a government in previous iterations under previous Prime Ministers who were, of course, stabbed in the back that probably broke more promises than any other governments in the history of the Commonwealth. Uh, those opposite loved nothing more than to make an announcement, to have a photo op. But when it came to the delivery, it was a very, very different situation indeed. Uh, and often it would be a case of announcement, photo op, uh, friendly media, give, give the front pages, uh, but then very little happened after that. Their, sort of, their lips were zipped at that point. And of course, they used distraction in order to, uh, to try and pretend that, uh, that they were delivering. But the reality is, with three prime ministers, they were more involved in the internals and using, in particular, as we heard today, posts of defence minister, veterans ministers, as uh, as, as prizes in, in factional battles around knifing leaders, uh, and which is not to take anything away from the previous speaker's uh, efforts when he held one of those posts, but he would have to say, without a doubt, uh, that that chopping and changing of ministers uh, in those portfolios led to an inability to deliver capability that leaves our nation now essentially with a very difficult uh, transition to submarine strike capability into the future at a time when there's perhaps the most difficult set of strategic circumstances uh, facing us. But who uh, could also forget, if I, we do go back in history a bit, because I think this is where the rot always started with those opposite, and some of those on the front bench and some of those on the back bench were part of these governments. Tony Abbott, remember that? Remember that government, the one that he led? Well, you would remember also that he said something like, uh, no cuts to the ABC and SBS, no cuts to education and health. Uh, and then he stood up and delivered probably what was the worst budget ever delivered in this country that did the exact opposite of what he had promised prior to that election. And what about their promise then also for stable government? Uh, before stabbing one Prime Minister, then another Prime Minister in the back. And those opposite, if I'm not mistaken, I'm happy to be corrected, hold the record when it comes to knifing their own leaders. They hold that record by a country mile, I would reckon. Ha happy, uh, happy to be uh, happy if anyone wants to give another situation where we had something so destabilising. Uh, as, as that period in the last nine or ten years. So not only um, did they backflip, as I said, on uh, the submarine uh, purchases, uh, where with five billion dollars wasted, um, that money has just disappeared. And anyone who lives in regional Australia knows that five billion can do a fair bit. Um, so that left us in a strategic difficulty but also was a just fiscally just a waste uh, and is forever a, a stain on, on those governments. Now the list of their failed promises uh, in that defence arena alone would have me here half the day and I haven't got much time uh, left but um, there were so many promises and I want to touch on First Nations uh, because they said they would engage more with First Nations uh, but then refused to back the Uluru Statement from the heart, which came from the heart of First Nations people about what they needed to move forward. They ignored that, then called a Royal Commission into youth detention in the Northern Territory, 
but then didn't do anything to help with the implementation of those recommendations, which again is another stain on those opposite that they should be ashamed of. Thanks, Deputy.